<laughs> you know hey, God. Scott for Dummies here. What are you What's doing? What's going on? Happy uh, Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday yeah. gentlemen. Good Hold to on. see you. I forgot I'm doing to pour water. something. Way to go, Sean. Jeez. Shut up. Well, I drank mine. I'm doing water between <laughs> our warm-up dram, so. How about that? Mm. That, that Budenhaven 12 is, is a nice stuff. foundation, I'll tell you. I can't uh, taste it. Yeah, you can't I'm just going to go ahead and kill this thing. All right, go ahead. Whoa, shit. It's Good barely Lord. a pour. Man, well, yeah. some, you drink that. I'm going to have some Signa after this one. So. Yeah, me too. That's I'm, going. <laughs> I'm also going to have some Signa. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Well, hey, well, how are you, everybody? Welcome to Thursday. Welcome to Thursday. Thank you, Drew. Pull that up. I'm pulling it up. All right, all right, all right. So first things first, Trooper Henry. Oh man, stuck offshore. All right, buddy. everybody owes one to Trooper. Trooper. One Trooper. Cheers, man. Mm. Stuff work is on. So stuff work to get that Amrit. Amrit. Mm, I like eat that. You know some of this. And look at this guy. This guy right here. Watch that out. He wasn't even supposed to be here today. Urban is the man. He, we don't really need to do a show tonight because he already said we're good to go. So yep. Yeah, he said we don't need cool. to change anything. We're good. We're going to go uh, <laughs> drink. Wheels, good to see you. Hey, look at this guy's on too. Hey, hey, nice. Mark, Cheers, man. Old, uh, Nurse Day, good to see you. See if I can get Four it. Four-day weekend. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Oh, that's nice. Really cool. Yeah. It's amazing how how nice a 40 weekend. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, wow. Right? You know, it's, like, it's, not, it's not that expensive for me. I don't know what that is. But it's a big deal. <laughs> I agree. I know you have. Yeah. I'm Scotch off next on Thursday. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Steve Rogers? Rogers. Bob H. No, no problem. Bobby and Michael are uh, admin, moderator. Hey, we've got a... What do we call them in the show? Don't, don't we have a cake from Mr. JG? Intern. <laughs> Our intern. We do have a cake from Mark JG. We've got we to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Cal Dram Dram. Gerber does have a meeting in five hours, so we got to... We gotta speed this along. Speed this along. So, <laughs> why are you nosing the glass? He's, so look, he's look trying, trying. So he's trying. Something. It's gonna come back, Bob. So we're, we're giving him a little bit of signet to see if he can really pull anything out of there. Why not? He offered it. I would have gone peated, but that's just me. Nope. <laughs> nothing. Nothing <laughs> on the nose. There's this no. nice black. Nothing on the nose. Wow, nothing. that's too bad. All right. Well, really? Is so before we really spot. get into this, though, do we want to talk about what we have in the bar right now? Yes. Talk about it. Yeah. So um, a, a fellow YouTuber, I, well, I used to be well, YouTuber, Instagram, Instagram, or Instagram or more than anything. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar, but uh, Scotch Trooper. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead. I don't <laughs> want to say. And I don't so know tough Scott, to say. Sir, you know, he um. He used to uh, post a ton of pictures uh, with Star, Star Wars figurines and, and whiskey bottles. Awesome photographer, did great work. Then he got in some. They somebody started busting his chops because they were saying it was it was marketing for marketing children. children and alcohol. And so he had to kind of take a whole change, and that that really sucked. But at the end of the day, um, he actually. Uh, is in bad shape. Uh, he's got cancer and his um, pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic and, cancer. And unfortunately, I don't know. I don't know if it's honestly if it's happened already or not. But we know that it's it's very and close. It, right, it's yeah. very close. So um, tonight we're basically our motto is this is our bar, is your bar. Pull up the chair tonight. He's drinking with us. He's right here all night with That's us. That's right. So to him, we're gonna raise a glass and. and yep. And a toast. It may be a little and, 30 second of silence in his, his. Yeah. All right. Cheers. 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 Mm. All right. All right. God bless him. May the force be with you, brother. Yeah, okay. You know. um, Speaking so, of force, this was a force this week, gentlemen. I just tried, had, had a sip. Did you? Did and you it's um, there's definitely something different than this. I can, you know, if I were blindfolded, that, I could tell coffee. you that that's different than this. You know what I mean? So right. progress. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> baby steps, baby, baby steps. Yeah. Um, we're still not gonna let you do a review. No, but. I'm not ready to get back <laughs> in, that, in that seat, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's talk about that signal. What did you guys have to say about it? Where did it come in comparatively to the first review? 
almost on top of it. I think, I mean, obviously you weren't here, so it kind of skewed the final numbers, but we did, I think, basically the same. Yeah. About three, I think five three, five is, was what we ended up doing. And yep, yeah, it was off rate. So the, one of the things that was difficult for me is Signet is so much more expensive now than it used to be. It, that's yeah. true. The the tariff, and I think also just quite I'm honestly, you out right there Gl like Glenmo's um, prices, I mean, it was $170 or $270 at a total wine. That's an expensive bottle. But what the thing about it, it, yeah, it was like it was under 200 last yeah, time. Yeah, I thought it was like yeah. 179 yeah. or something yeah. like that. So it's 100 dollars more than it what used to be. Well, you think about 25% tariff. On that's gonna that's gonna yep. hit an expensive bottle harder. Yeah, 300 dollars bottle at 75 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. Put that Luke Skywalker <laughs> comment up. What do you say? Uh, Luke Skywalker could never find love because he was looking in. All the wrong place. All the really <laughs> wow, that's a dead joke. Hey, I'm, proud, I'm proud of you. And, I'm and proud kind of you. an incest joke. Uh, <laughs> hey, actually, uh, we're just gonna get off topic just for a second. Uh, Michael, we do have some some wild turkey here that uh, Andrew brought over. We're talk, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but yep. we will bring it to Mark and see if his taste buds. Maybe that's the magic. I'm kit. sure he can pull out rye. He's got to be oh, able yeah. to pull out rye. Sure, sure. But Signet, know. guys, this week was delicious. Um, and I was so happy to re-review it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I said on the video it was 2018. It was actually 2017. Yeah. So it's even longer. And, and the, putting the video together, looking back at how younger, how much younger we were. Yeah. That, that's rough when we go do these re-reviews uh, and we're like, well, the weird thing was wow. I, I showed it to my wife and said, you guys don't look any older. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. What? what? Right? Are you watching in HD? Because you can see a lot of HD. Maybe that was an maybe issue. That's, maybe that's we were watching in HD. It's all blurry. We were in <laughs> HD then. We should go back to 720. Yeah. Where's, where's the camcorder? <laughs> uh, that's the problem. Uh, so 169 recently in the U.S. Now, see, that's 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 cheap. An acceptable price. Yeah, that's that's really, really cheap, good. actually. So that's a great I, deal. I think that a lot of these expensive bottles, it does vary a lot uh, hey, depending on yeah, where you're at, wise. state to state, and even – even liquor store to liquor store. So if you that's can find true. it for that's a good price, true. then, yeah. you know, go for it. I, I think that it's well worth 169 And so the thing about this is it's completely different than any other scotch I've tried. The, the, um, the, the uh, chocolate sure. malt that they use and the flavoring, it just it adds a different flavor. It, it's like your bitter uh, uh, stouts and stuff like that. It's got that the chocolate flavor to it. It's and in a world of its own. It, it's completely different scotch. Yeah. Right. It really is. It, yep. it stands out. And it, it, the, the cool thing, too, is the story of what Glen Morangy does with the foundation, the original, and how it, it's used. There's only a few other bottles in their whole lineup that don't, don't start with that. Obviously, this is one of them. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it's an interesting, I don't know, variant, I guess, on their line. Um, and it's it's fun that it was experimental, and now it's permanent core yeah. range. So. Yeah. Um, which I mean oh, says wow. a lot. Hold on, we get some pricings coming. Okay. Wow. So stuff for work says two thirty. Yeah, that's about what Virginia. we're seeing here too. Really, three twenty. Ooh, wow. that, okay. I would say I don't know if it's worth. But that. you know what's know. crazy? So you're talking about almost double the price. Wow. Of of a different right. state. That's right. unbelievable. Yeah, we we haven't yet actually, uh, <laughs> Michael. We have heard that Chad's a couple times. Too, it's funny. What do you say? One of those bottles, I go to buy, but then I get distracted. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That happens a that lot happens. with the expensive bottles because it's an opportunity cost. Ooh, wow. Right. Right. Especially if it's really expensive. That's a buy right there, I think. Yep. Yeah. 189. Oh, Hondo, good yeah. deal. Yeah. I, yeah. I would say yeah, anything barely. in that un, sub 200 range is is fair game. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what we're seeing too. I, I think, honestly, if you're. If you can find it right now, honestly, if I was you, I would go out looking for it and see if you can hopefully find it in that older price range because they may have not marked it up yet. Uh, yeah, if it's, yeah. Been, if it's going if to it's get it's been on up. the shelf for a long time pre tariff, then maybe it's still at low price. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah, yeah, but they, it's going to be easily above two hundred. I think I think between two and two thirty, it's probably going to be the average price going yeah. forward. Even more. even after tariffs. Even after tariffs. Yep. Yeah, it's one yeah. of those bottles. It's got hey, D. it's notorious. It's a great bottle, and it's. They're going. They're going to try and get their money. I like the it. uniqueness of it. Yep. Yeah. So, it's nice to have it's on the bar because it's so much different. Honestly, they spent some money on the packaging and you well, know, yeah, the is nice. It's a showpiece. And I have one on at uh, my my steakhouse. Oh, you it's did? on the bar. Yeah. yeah nice. Yeah. I, I, I had it. I think I had the first time out of it. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I did. Good for you, buddy. So, it's tasty. Uh, and I'm. 
I'm going to try and keep it there, and and we keep everything reasonably priced. Yeah, yeah. His, yeah, his, his so I'm curious. Are, how how is your? You got a pretty good collection there. Are they are they hitting the high growing? stuff, or are they hitting? So we we sell a lot of penicillins. Which are good by my taste, by the way. The, the higher end scotches, it's funny because I think that there's a lot of people that will eventually come around and be like, oh, man, you got that? That's that's awesome. And there's some stuff that people have like taken a swing at. But then there's other stuff that I thought would get would get tore into. Like the Aberlower hasn't been opened yet. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, so so I kind of the, thought that yeah. was interesting. The Abedor, uh, yeah, that's interesting. But, uh, sherry bombs yet. you know, like McAllen's and stuff like that, everybody kind of tears through that stuff. But we sold we sold a fair amount of Ardbeg just because of the penicillin. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. Right. that's um, a good question from Krista. Hey, guys, do you ever see a bottle or label and then Paul spy without doing research in the sky? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All, all, all the time. All the time. <laughs> um, you should see us in a liquor store. <laughs> well, it's, it's not. It's not a five minute job. We walk in, and it's going to be walking around for a while, especially yeah. if, it's a, if it's big. It's few and far between for me to to really have not done any research on it because I we've been doing this for close to six years. That's a ton of research. So just knowing the the distilleries and having that memory of what, you know, you see a Glendronic, you've got an expectation there right off the gate. All right. I know, yep. you know, and I'm more like to impulse buy on that. If it's one I've never seen, I'm like, hey, it's my price point. I can afford it. Even if it's one, an independent you know? bottling. Or well, something. see, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. If they're, if they're distillers, we haven't ever done before. <laughs> those, then absolutely. Right. Those are, yes. Go, let's try it. Yes. I'm going to leave this one up for a while. Because <laughs> he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fair enough. That's 20. on your bar, isn't it? I know. It needs more. Um, <laughs> but you know what, Mark, you mentioned independent bottlers. And, and that's one thing that I have really gotten into. And I've seen a lot more right. of them right. than I ever had before. And they're and they're pretty good. I've gotten two Blair Athols I've been in love with. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of really the only way to get Blair Athol. You can get that Flora and Fauna series, right? Um, that's the that's it. That's it. Which... Yeah. You know, the, the uh, SMWS has put one or two out recently, like the last year. Um, and what did you had another one? What was the other? Mm hmm. Inside. That's funny. It's Wizzles. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wizzles? Yeah. Ah, it. now it's coming together. Now it make, it make it more sense. So, Wizzy D, we said, hey. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, sorry, I sidetracked there. But yeah, the Signet has been a good bottle. I think it's definitely worth the buy. So let's move on to the bigger topic. And, and this is actually a decent segue to kind of how we rated this week's. We've had a few, we actually had a lot of comments about rating this bottle and the price. We really need it. to talk about this. Yes. Well, it, it's, <laughs> it's something that's been up and we've probably seen a dozen or so in the last two weeks. And we get at least once every review saying, mm -hmm. hey, you shouldn't take price in this or I don't understand your, your rating system. <laughs> right, you should use a hundred point rating system, or you should use a ten point rating system. Right, you should. Do. And right. we've been getting those comments for five and a half years. And honestly, <laughs> we did put a little bit of thought into our rating system before we started this. We did. I mean, a we little about bit. it. Let's right. not get carried. Four yeah. fingers. Right? Right. Four fingers. <laughs> two fingers. One finger. What's up, Philly? Yeah, let's let's pull up a, a little PowerPoint that uh, I think we might be interested in to show here. You raise we this? love PowerPoint. You know, we're in the the uh, corporate world. PowerPoints are. Stuff so let's go. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, never I survived. Power. Yeah, you're not corporate. <laughs> nope, you're a private, private business. <clears throat> right, let me pull this guy up here, oh, Billy. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I'm alive, man. I, I survived it and uh, just need to get the taste back, buddy. All oh. right, so we're to the side. Here we go. Yeah, All right, so. yeah, so this is your basic scoring system. So there, there's a couple of ways to score, and, and most common is a hundred point scale. And the basic system is this. You have 100 point, which is your max. Most of these systems start at 50. But if you look at the um, modernthirst.com's version there, below 75, don't bother. Forget it. Um, whiskey jug, below 60, don't bother. Um, and below 70, you only want to make jungle juice out of it. So I don't know any scotch that you're going to make jungle juice out of. Um, say that. With, it, with a whiskey scores... <laughs> 60 is it's okay I'll, I'll have it i'll drink it again so this is the this is the kind of stuff you have out there now if you go to like the the corporate groups like scotch whiskey association they say you need to taste nose and palate and you know appearance but finish they, they, they don't ever talk about number nice. they don't use a number so these numbers these numbering scales are aligned in that 100 is the max 
and typically 50 is the bottom, but there's no official line of what that means. Now, if you go into an advanced system with this whiskey score, you can break it into like roughly four categories is what I've seen. Um, nose and palate and finish are in all of them. But then you have like appearance. So the, if you color it well, you're getting a high appearance score. My sketch came in a cocktail dress. Look it, good. Exactly. <laughs> um, Jim Murrah, which is, you know, one of the leading experts on it, has balance as a 25. Not, not so much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, whatever. It, but so the balance is, is a number, you know, and so. But you said something before the show that's different about the way he does it, too, is he. He goes from reverse, right? Yes. He starts at 100. And backs off. And backs off. Right. What are these Which other I ones? I like that. They, they, they start at zero and work up, but they don't start at zero because they all start at 12 and a half because they all start at 50 and work up. Right. Right. So what? why do you have a 25-point scale when you're really only using 12 points of it? Right. It doesn't make any sense. It's all subjective and it's all a load of garbage. And and there's probably, I mean, how many review when we started, first started doing this, there's probably a handful of us doing the reviews right now. Right. There's probably hundreds. Hundreds. Of yeah. And everyone kind of has their own rating system. But at the end of the day, most of them, to your point, are really 75 and up or, you know, or maybe even higher than 80. 80%. Well, and, and, and Sean recommended earlier that we look at, look at wine. How, do, how does wine do it? It's the exact same stuff. Yeah. 100 point scale. Fit below 50 is garbage. Don't even bother. Below 75, you probably don't want to drink it either. And above 75, then we'll start to talk. Now, I will say it's above the international whiskey competition, uh, their judges, I, I kind of liked, they've got a standardized scoring card that they go through and they kind of train them how to use it. Um, but the thing that I liked was it, it's all blinds, obviously. But they throw in old stuff that they'd already judged and knew what it was at some point to just kind of test how accurate they were judging things to make sure that the that the number that they were giving uh, something that they'd already judged was coming in roughly the same, which I kind of like that dials it in and makes sure that judge is actually doing what he's supposed to be doing on a subjective. Yeah. So go back level, to the, right? the, the basic scoring system and the, these somewhat align when you get into the. 80 and up range um, because you, you get into the, so whiskey jug on the, on the right there above 80, it's, you know, worth tasting uh, whiskey scores is we'll drink with great, great pleasure and 80, uh, you know, modern thirst is questionable, potentially flawed. What, where do you get where, good? Where are the, these are all just subjective, right? I mean, it is everything. It, it is completely subjective. And if somebody gives an, a score an 88, that could be um, great, always want to have a bottle. It could be solid sipper, won't turn it down, or it could be we'll drink with great, great pleasure. So the only difference really is these are these are all talking about points of, of from the reviewer standpoint, which are normal people. When you're talking about contests and doing some kind of scotch judging, that's a different system system all together, right? As far it as is. you're it, gonna and I, li I like the detail that you have on the, the more advanced scoring because you can kind of break it down. But I, I've never been able to find what is if – if I'm looking at nose, Oops. what scores a 22 on the nose and what scores an 18 on the nose? I can't I can't find Email that. Email him. He might, he might there's, respond. There's he's got no, time on his hands. Yeah, that, that may be. That may be worth <laughs> more worth <laughs> Yeah, Ralph, you won't – so let's go with this one. 100 point scale is fine from zero to 50 is the terrible stuff that never makes it to yeah, show. And, and when's the last time you've ever seen something like so, that? So, so why, 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 yeah. why have it? Right. So why even market? And, I mean, I guess you might get it's something. For, it's good for Mark who can't taste, but you might get something and, and, and say, well, that's, that's, that's really crappy. Are you, do you really care? It's under 50. I'm not going to, it's not going to be on the, it's not going to be on the shelf under 50. So why would you have a scale that goes below 50? I beg to white walker that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, this is, so, so there's that. So any any, and then there's the real rating system. <laughs> let, let me let me share that again. I'm sure it back. So let's do this. What you doing? I'm doing this. 
So this is the S4D rating system. So we've got the four finger port, right? This. Is, so Mark, can you tell us kind of how we came yeah, up with that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, five and a half years ago when we were talking about how we were going to do this, if you've ever measured your your pour of whiskey in a glass, um, people are, are up to measure it with their fingers. Give me a you know, give me a two finger pour. So I want you know, I want a, that much whiskey in my glass, or I want a four finger pour. You know, and so we're like, you know, that's a crafty. Thing. We're, we've said that catchy, before, it's something catchy, different. And, and it's different. And in the end, the number isn't really the important part of what we were trying to do anyway. The number was just really supposed to give somebody a quick reference when they're standing there in the liquor store looking and at the massive wall of whiskey, and they could look at Scotch for Dummies scoring, you know, spreadsheet, pull it right up, and be like. Oh, Sean, man, I really relate with that guy. I like the whiskeys he likes. And he gave this a three five, so I'm gonna get it. Um, but if you want the, the the meat and potatoes, is us actually going through the whiskey? What do you smell? Right. What are your notes? What are you getting? That's like, the key. That's what what is really all about. So the number really was I don't know, just something a to way to distill down, sum it up, twenty minutes worth of comments into a right. number and into a number. And, and as far as uh, using you know four we've thought about we've actually debated it gone around and, and there's been comments that maybe we should break it down into quarter point systems so 1.25 1.5 1.375 or whatever you know what i mean but well he's right steve and steve was right we have a seven point scale. let's go through that real quick go yeah. through one of those yep so let's go so, through. so so this is a top number four right so this is Basically, we're talking King Alexander. We get the monkey shoulder a four based on price, et cetera. And we'll quality, talk but, about the price thing here in a minute. Too. But but a four is this. You must own this bottle. This is a bottle if, that if you, you can't go past. If you, you can see afford it, it, you can afford it. Buy it. You absolutely will not be disappointed. Correct. Does it mean it's the you know coup de gras that the holy grail of whiskey, the best whiskey in, in the world? No, we're we're not saying that. I'm sure no, no, there's, there's some better, fours that we've had that I'm that like, are pretty good, but I'm sure there's a better whiskey out there. It's it's just you got to have it if you can afford it. Get it. Mm -hmm. Three five. To me, three five is a complex, interesting whiskey. It's fun in the glass. The nose has interesting things going on. It's good on the palate. It's, it holds water. Well, like it's just a good solid dram okay. um, at whatever the price point is. For that it doesn't matter. Bottle. It's a three, five is really, if you get something it. between a, a three, five and a four, it's, it's an excellent whiskey. Yeah. If you can afford to buy it. When, and then we recommend this. The first one is owned by highly recommend, highly recommended. And then the th number three, Sean is. So to me, three is, is a, more than above average dram. Um, it's it's maybe lacking a little bit of complexity um, that that would push it up a little bit higher, but it's still got some some depth and interesting character. Uh, maybe the nose isn't as complex, or maybe it's lacking something on the palate, or the finish is a little bit shorter than you would like, or maybe it's just a lower ABV, so it doesn't you know hold up to water, or, sure. or over time like the nose kind of wafts off and you don't get quite as much out of it. So there's there's subtle things that are I wouldn't say a problem. It's still a really good glass. I'd still want to buy one, but maybe it just doesn't quite have that that oomph to get it to the next level. Well, and, and well, go back. And the, the other key about that is if it fits your profile, right, your it's profile. almost That's a true. must buy. That's true. So right. if, you're, if it if it's a sherry bomb, and you love sherry bombs, you probably need really to get really it. Want to push it. Right. But it, but if you're if you're if it's a peat, peated whiskey and you're not a peat head. It's it's not not, do it maybe it's not for you, but the, those three fives and fours are good enough that you need to try them, even if you are not a maybe a sherry hit or smoke hit, because you sure. need to go to that because it's a really good representation of that whiskey. Agreed. And the, the nice thing about this, and we'll finish off in a second, but at the end of the day, we do our own individual ratings, but it, it all ends up being an average, right? right? And that's where Mark, you're probably heading towards that whole quarter, right. etc. So let's finish this off real quick. Yeah. So. So two five to me is a, a little bit above average glass. So it's got a little bit more complexity, a little bit more than just a standard like malt beverage. One better, right? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's one Half better, better, right? Half but, better. but maybe it's got just a little bit of you know <laughs> a, an interesting flavor that you don't see every day, or you know maybe it's a sherry finished whiskey, so it's just got a little bit of depth and complexity. Yeah. It's got a good mouthfeel. Like it's, it's just a, a above average glass, sure. right? Two to me is that's a daily drinker. So to me, that's, 
that's a bottle that you're going to grab. And, you know, so that's a Glenfiddich, you know, 15 or, yeah. you know, something that you just go to, you know, it's a good drink. You don't necessarily need to pay attention to it too much. It's, it's well put together. It's got everything that you want in a scotch, but it, it doesn't have a lot of like extra. Yeah. You don't, on, you right? don't have to uh, support it and like, uh, bow down to it it's just it's a good it's a good everyday dram yep yeah. right one five we're getting into the realm of this this has got some issues right, right? like <laughs> uh, it's best. it's got it's it, the nose is is not right or you know maybe it's just kind of a disjointed whiskey uh, it's, it's got off. some off flavors to it. Maybe right. it's a younger whiskey and it just needed some time to develop. Maybe it's just put together bad. This is your you White know? Walkers. This is your Scotch Blue. You and know, something else. Too, and then, I, don't remember. I mean, we've rated some whiskeys at one and but, well, individually, individually, individually no, not no. we've never, ever averaged out at one no, or below. No, no. Um, but to me, these are bottles that are just bad bottles. This is this is really your White Walker. This is your. Like these are a cash grab. They're horrible. If they were 10 bucks on a discount bin, you should still walk should away and go spend your money on something else. Go buy a Powerball ticket or something. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Mark them up. Single cigarettes. <laughs> the Lucy's are always single, good. Single cigarettes. <laughs> you can't go wrong. So Mark, what about how, how does price come into this scale? So too? yeah, uh, we, we definitely uh, get beat up on this and it, it can muddy the waters a little bit, right? Uh, Cause as I was listening to Sean talk about the two, the everyday, you know, drinker, you're right. A two should be something about an everyday drinker, but what happens when you rate a $350 bottle of two? Well, that ain't a daily drinker for this guy. I can't swing that kind of cash. Good on point. The, on no, the day. Good but point. to me, those are bottles that are getting beat up because they should be better. If you're charging me 350 bucks, it should be an exceptional whiskey. Well, you know, okay. it, it, so, it yeah. should automatically have characteristics that I would throw it up into the three, five and above because you're asking this huge price. Well, and sure. if it doesn't have that, if it's just giving you, if it's a, if it's just a regular multi scotch and it's not giving you depth or complexity or anything else, then it's a two and maybe a one five. And a good example of that is nothing to be not bashing anything, but the McAllen rare cask is a great example of that. That bottle is at least what? 250 right now, 300 yeah. bucks. Right. Yeah. And you're paying more, for marketing and the name than you are the whiskey and the and bottle. Yeah. For sure. And so, so that one to me is definitely a good example of the whiskey mm -hmm. itself is probably closer to a two, maybe a two five, but the bottle, uh, you know, the bottle is going, the price is going to bring it down. Oh, well, actually the whiskey itself is higher, but the with the uh, bottles are going to bring it down more right. because of the price. price. And the alternate yeah. to that is like monkey shoulder. It's, <laughs> so it's not that fantastic of whiskey, but for 30 bucks, it's a great value. Yeah. And so that brings it up it. the scale more because that's something you, it's definitely worth exactly. buying, you know, like a three or three, five. We recommend buying it because it's a great value. It's not, it's not better than like a King Elegant or not better than some of the other ones, but as far as the whiskey goes, but I can get three bottles of this for the price of that. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure we're getting lots of comments yep. here. Yeah. Let's, we need to go catch up with these comments. Of this but, stuff here. So in the end, price matters. Have we been completely uh, consistent over the last six years or, or whatever on price? Maybe not. We've maybe huh. wavered a little bit. And and that who's that guy? Who's that? 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 But price, when, when, we, when you back up to what we're here for, why we started the channel, what do we start with the channel? To help Four people guys, buy. To help you, you know, make informed purchases on your next, you know, scotch buy. So it, it, it price matters. Price has to be considered in there. Yes. Now, do we consider it in the scoring system moving forward? We've talked about, you know, maybe we do something, you know, score the whiskey with a number um, and then price can either take it up a half or down a half. We've, we've thought about doing that. Or we just put the number out there and then say, considering price I go thumbs up. In other words, I, it's it's even better with if I wanted to say price, or I go arrow down because it's a little bit needs to be knocked for price. I don't know, but I mean, at the end of the day, I think we're sticking with the four finger yeah. four. Yeah, and I I told everybody on Discord today that I don't think that I've ever Aww, raised or lowered man. anything. Thanks, D. Thanks, Thanks D. D. I'm gonna pour something for that. Right. I don't think I've ever raised or lowered anything more than like a half a point because of price. 
I mean, it, to me, it factors in, but the whiskey still has to be worth drinking. Yeah, you right. know, I mean, just because White Walker is nine ninety nine on the sales shelf doesn't mean that I'm going to bump it up to a three all of a sudden. It's not a good whiskey. Well, and, and uh, you've got to your point earlier. It's so, it's, <laughs> even our stuff is subjective. I mean, it's just, absolutely it's just an opinion. And what we're thinking, we're trying to make it a little bit. We're just as bad as all the others. We are. We're no it's better, a, no worse. It's a subjective score masked as a analytical tool. Yes. Right? The really, I, mean, I think Mark, <laughs> you nailed it earlier. I think the biggest thing for us is we're, we're just trying to help you make an educated decision <laughs> that's going to fit your your taste buds, your wallet, and you got four opinions giving it to you at the same time. Hold on. Yeah, did I put that Tom R up? What did Tom say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can envision it. Right? <laughs> can you dig it? I can dig it. Can you dig it? I can dig it. That's funny. <laughs> the coarse light of my whiskey. Mark McKenzie said, Signet was a good example of price uh, dingling down a half point. Probably get four. Yeah, you're right. I, that's uh, probably true, Mark. Yeah. That's yes. very much true. That thing, I guarantee you right now, that bottle. It was under a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. It'd be a four every now, day. And there are some bottles that we've just taken com price completely out of the game. Like well, the um, well, we, McAllen uh, six. Yeah. Those, those mean, you kind of have to. A it's a $4,000 bottle, right? Yeah. Like with the tariffs, it's five. So if you've got that kind of money, like you're not worried about it. <laughs> well, so, it, you know, Philly, Philly Scorpio, pull, pull this comment up there. You're, you're absolutely right. And this is where we, we get, we get beat up, right? So, you know, the Buna 18 and the Monkey Shoulder both scored three fives. How is that possible, right? They're completely – it's about the review. Completely, I mean, different, completely whiskey. different whiskeys. Don't don't compare the two because they're three both three fives. Well, one's a blended malt and has in a $30 bottle, and I, I would expect it to fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Buna 18. But And honestly, I think that there's some that are – like we come in with an expectation too. We've done this a sure, long time, right? Sure. Yeah, so there's definitely some stuff that I come into. Sure. Thanks, Gerb. Nice Man. Uh, well, but there's some stuff that you that come into, even if you've never had anything from the distillery, even if you have no idea what you're getting into at all, it's it's finished in a sherry cast. All right. Well, that gives me some clues about what I've got going on. It's a 20-year-old whiskey. Okay. Well, that gives me some clues too about what I should expect from that bottle. And so then if it lives up to that and goes above and beyond, then, you know, I can find, kind of figure out where my score is going to land. Right. But there's a lot of times, I mean, even when you watch the reviews, I know for a fact that I've said, you know, I came in with an expectation of, and this has exceeded it, or this has done something right. different than I thought it would. And I mean, that's kind of how I start with my scoring is, you know, where my expectation is for a hundred dollar bottle done in this style. Yeah, honestly, I don't think when I when I go through a review, I don't I don't give it any thought until I get that nose, that first nose, and it's it's already landed somewhere on that scale. Yeah. All right. I'm like, okay, boom! I just touched base at two. All right. Where where am I going with this? Smell it a couple more times. Uh oh, this yeah, is coming out. This is coming yeah. out. Man, I'm at a two five now. And, uh, you know, and then the water comes in later, like, wow, okay, I just went up some more because right. that water did some serious It, it is. You can always tell when, you, when you've got a good whiskey, you watch our reviews, and we've got a good whiskey, and we're like, oh. When we're serious for a little bit? That's yeah, we're whiskey. like, mm. And I can remember some reviews where we had, you know, something light and floral, and, you, you, you know, it's 40 ABV, and you drop some water on it, not expecting anything, and it brings out something new, and you're like, oh, wow. And I can tell you right now, that bumps it up a half a point right. just because it <laughs> – it brought out some different stuff yeah. and I wasn't expecting it. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that go on in the review. If you're paying close attention, you guys all watch us. So you kind of know, but I mean, we have sat at a bar for a very long time. So I can watch Andrew or Mark or Drew and their facial expressions and kind of how they're going through the glass. I know where they're going to land pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I, I know, I mean, Mark will throw me numbers, you know, under when Drew's like, under the hey, you know, <laughs> three, right. And, and so, I mean, we, we kind of, you know, discuss those guys before Every they once go. Once in a while, Andrew will throw us a curve like, what? The yeah. Hell? But it's, I mean, it's, if I'm in a peated mood, man, some of those light whiskeys are just nothing to me. But if I, if, it, if I'm in a peated mood and we hit a peated whiskey, ah, uh, good stuff. Yeah. It is subjective, but totally. But it is also, I think, a consistency thing. I think we we rate our stuff fairly consistently. I think we are. We, we are. Time. I think we're so, and, and you made a comment before the show, um, on the during the pre-show, 
you know, once you've averaged our four scores, you, you, we all get our individual and you average it out. And honestly, average is out to what you really what we're thinking anyway. Like, you know what? That does that comes in at a 3.187. And you're like, that's, yeah, that sounds about right. It's about a little above a three. Yeah, that seems that's fair. what that whiskey deserved. Yeah. You know, it, it always works out that way. So <laughs> I, 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 so I don't know. Let's pull back up for a second because she had a question earlier when I wanted to kind of get to. Oh, yeah. uh, Krista? Yeah. So there, so there was a couple answers to it, too, as well. Um, how would you suggest someone who is new to whiskey taste them at home? It's really hard. hard. Commitment. Um, alone sucks. All right. That's tough. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to taste stuff in a vacuum. And we learn from being together. Right. Uh, from talking to each other. What do you get out of this glass? What do you, what do you smell? What do you taste? And we got better over time. Yep. Yeah, and so I, I would say if you're if you're by yourself, I think going to bars is the way to do it. You can get a single pour of it and go through it by yourself and work through it. It's it's much less expensive than having to buy a whole bottle. That's it's not true. cheap because some of these uh, pours can be expensive, but that's a good way to to start. I mean, unless they've got like a half off night or something like yeah. that to to get people in to try things. So. But um, if you don't, if you don't have someone to physically sit with and, and actually share the same, you know, whiskey with, um, take whatever you're going to try at home and get on YouTube and find one of the reviewers out there that's going to go through it. And then you go through it while they're going through it and see, wow, can I pick up that note? And maybe you will, maybe you won't. In the beginning, you're probably not going to. You're like, Man, I don't know where he's getting. What did he say? Marzipan? What the hell? Google that. What's Marzipan? I still remember that day <laughs> like, at the bar. Like, what the hell is Mars? Well, I'm like, that, what's he talking about? The, the other thing I would suggest is if you can find a liquor store that opens bottles and will sample stuff that, well, that so has a good, knowledgeable stuff. staff, there are liquor stores out there that, that do that right. kind of thing, and their staff is very helpful and very knowledgeable, and they can kind of help and guide you yep. to things that you're going to enjoy. So you're going to spend your money on something that you can actually take home and be happy with. I mean, we're kind of like unboxers for scotch. Because if you if you look at like yeah. what's out there on YouTube, I mean, vlogging is probably number one. But unboxing is up there for people. They like to see what you know, buying a product or whatever. Just events. And if you think about what us as reviewers, not just us, but other people out there doing the same thing, it's a it's a way to kind of open something up, find out what it is, yeah. and um, taste it and get some feedback about what's going on without you buying it, understanding it. I mean, it's, it's a nice way to kind of open it up and see, you know, right. especially, especially if you've got somewhat of a palate already focused on something like I, I really like, you know, I like that, I like that uh, Glenn live at 15 that I had before, you know, am, am I going to like this Lafroig? I don't, I don't know anything about this. And if you watch somebody review it and listen to it, it might steer you away from oh, yeah, some you, money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And another thing that's really need to do, especially if you're trying to get started in it, is pay more attention to your palate and your nose. Thanks, Daniel. Um, thanks, thanks, Daniel. Daniel. Appreciate thanks. it. And, and what I mean by that is on, on every day when you're eating lunch or breakfast or dinner, pay more attention to what you're tasting, what you're smelling, and start. And you start building up a memory of that. So then when you do get to the whiskey, it's easier <laughs> to draw back. But um, <laughs> yeah, we need to super chat him. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's an awesome comment. That, yeah. Honestly, that makes what we do like the best when, when we hear this success stories from you guys, you know, yeah. from learning from us or listening to us and you guys, have, you know, we've helped you in some way that makes us feel better than anything. Yeah. I mean, that's like why us. we did it. So yeah, absolutely. I was actually hey, telling Jeff a story um, this week. I was talking to a, a colleague at work and she, she was asking about how, how did you get started on YouTube? I'm like, it's a funny story. <laughs> and, uh, how much but, time do you have? How much time do you have? But just, it started with, you know, us getting together and sticking camera in front of our faces and hindering cord and just <laughs> putting it out there. And, Hi, we're Scotch for Dummies. <laughs> we're, we like to drink Scotch. Join our journey. Is this thing on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember the first, we used to have like discussions. Oh. So Sean and Mark, they're our talkers of the group. They can they can we talk. It's, easy, it's easy for them. But we we every once in a while it's like okay, well Drew, it's your turn to do the. Back then it was like your your turn to talk you about the, it yep. intro. And I was like, oh god, I don't know if I can do this. It was so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> That's so I don't know. Fun. We've we've definitely grown watching those old it's videos. It's hard now, but uh, really funny. But we have over the years struggled with the rating system. We're not, we haven't struggled. Some of our viewers have struggled. Yeah, they don't understand. They don't get it. And yeah. it's 
I want to just say, don't, don't, don't overthink it. It's not, it's not supposed to be complex and crazy. I mean, it's a number and it's a number that's supposed to help you out on the spot. It's the review that's more important yeah, and you're going to relate to one of us. I, there's group think amongst four people. I get it, but we, we all have separate profiles and you're going to attach to one of those profiles. And those are going to be the numbers that you pay more attention to, right? You, you almost need to watch the reviews that we all don't agree. <laughs> those are fun. I love them. You know, we're, we're, it's great. Those, those are, are the good best ones. <laughs> yeah. That sparks the most conversations. But mm -hmm. you know, the other thing too is we'll talk a second about maybe the new format coming up. But one of the things that we do as well is we don't ever pre-drink anything. I mean, we no. everything is live. So when you watch that review, we push record and we did it one we're time. We're on. Yep. yep. It's on. And one we time. have the entire time that we've done this. There's, there's some outtakes. I mean, Drew does some editing because sometimes Sean and I just can't help ourselves and it just gets out they, of hand. It is a rabbit <laughs> hole to jump in and right. get them out sometimes. But, but for the most part, I mean, it's it's a, a push record and go. And then, you know, you, we finally push stop and look at Drew like, sorry about that, man. You know, you're going to have to clean that one up. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably cut it here. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> That's actually a good question. Uh, uh, who are you? So why don't you? Okay. So I'm maybe, Sean. Yeah, I'm not Drew. I'm an Andrew. So let's let's in the comments. It's a good I'm question. All four. I'm curious to see who because I'm a four. Put in the comments whose palette do you kind of relate to the most out of four of us? That's out of curiosity. You're not gonna hurt anybody. Yeah, yeah. you could add Doctor Scotch. Don't, don't worry to. if you don't ever put an Andrew. You okay. can add Doctor Scotch. <laughs> I won't be mine because I'm all over the board. Uh, and I know if, if Bud's on, I'm sure he'll love. He'll prefer me. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, I will. Alejandro's and Andrew. So, all right, Alejandro, I, I agree. Drew, Sean, Sean Drew. Ah. Look at Drew pulling a man. Drew! Who says I'm a Drew? I told you I'm going to get one because I love them all. <laughs> I, agree, I, I love you. Relate to me because I like every one of them. Uh, Andrew, I'm cheap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Bobby, really? Yeah, totally. Oh, I I you guys are totally aligned. Oh, jeez. Look at Drew. He's I got Molly. That's a good one. Yeah, give me those pretzels. Heck yeah. yeah. I'm Michael Hassler. That's it. I'll drink to that. I got one. I didn't That's get, right. I didn't get shut out. You and me, brother. We know it. Justin's a half Sean, half Andrew. Interesting. That's an interesting uh, mashup. Oh, right, that Andrew. So, nice. so the, the Molly beauty, got several books. And that's the beauty is, you know, <laughs> Molly got he's a burnt toast. <laughs> I'm a peated. <laughs> four. Wow, that's a that's a that's a compliment right there. Yeah. Holy so crap. totally, this guy. If you're going to go in a blind, you want to take him along with you. Hey, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of blinds. Speaking of blinds, oh, what's this shit. right here? Dun dun. dun dun. That's the the dun 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 dun. Bring it up to the camera. Today. Bring it up to the camera. Boom boom. Sean's got some work to do, guys. I'm not scared. You're scared. <laughs> I'm not scared. You're scared. I'm not scared. So we're gonna film it very, very soon and get it over to Roy. But, <laughs> Can't uh, wait to see that it's one. It's gonna be fun. It's, it's gonna be a lot good. of fun. I'm gonna bring the pain. You know, yeah. he, you know, he brought some good stuff. Oh yeah, that's yeah. gonna be fun. I'm, I'm really oh, interested to see what Daniel he packed Mark. for me. It's he does some really interesting. He puts a lot of thought into these, and well, and he's good. Uh, th these blinds are they are hard. It's really difficult mm -hmm. to sit down and actually think about not just what you have on your shelf, but the audience that you're going for. Like, what is this person's palette? What are they going to appreciate? What are they going to pick out? Yeah. And and still throw a curveball in there and have something laid out in a cohesive fashion. Like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> And, and his work. palette is very refined. He's very good. He's knowledgeable. He knows what he's doing. So he puts together a really solid <laughs> review, a, a really solid blog. Cal, you deserve it. a toast. Depends on the day, <laughs> mood you, I'm in. I remember. Um, to was that. It, when, when did we do that blind shootout that was kind of Roy style? Was that last beginning of last year or was that like later on? That was a lot of fun. That, that was, very, that was right yeah. after COVID shut down because we were all, all separated. That's right. So we each did a blind for the other three. Yep. And after that, what was really awesome is we we engaged our patrons and they sent us stuff. They did send a few. And things, that yeah. to me, that I mean, when we did it ourselves, yes, but we had a little bit of idea of somewhat of our bars. 
Yep. So yeah. we kind of, kind of cheated. They kind sense. of cheated a bit, yeah. But when the patrons well, sent us stuff, we knew everybody's but Marks. We had no idea. Marks. <laughs> but when the patrons sent us stuff, um, uh, man, it was awesome. Like, especially uh, like like Michaels and George. I mean, oh Michaels blind last year opened yeah. me up to naked grouse. That yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of his favorites. So, now. I mean, you can learn a lot on the blinds. I actually, if you would have, if I would have gotten picked for the Aquavite blind when you got picked. I would have been super nervous and you were super nervous. I was right. nervous. But <laughs> I, I will say that, you know, I, I think I've grown as a reviewer over that time. And so now it, it really is the whiskey on trial. Right. Like I'm going to rate them how they, yeah. how they fall. And, you know, I, it's, it'll be interesting to see what he picked for me and I'm, I'm anxious to do it. So I'm looking um, forward to it. I'm Dying to see the the, uh, the actual finished content because that's I know. And then we'll see how I did, and then I'll refill the bottles with something that looks kind of like that, and then we'll shoot it again. Knock it out of the park. I got a hundred. Like that. I got them all. I got them all right. Everybody's gonna be editing, going. That scotch looks a lot darker than the one that it should be. I don't. Maybe it's the lighting. It's got to be the lighting. It's the E150 in the water. Drew's <laughs> really good at editing. It's the E150 in the water. That's Everybody. right. So let's move on to this. What what happened this week, uh, Andrew? That uh, we've got a crap load of comments. About yeah. So that. Instagram right. had this little. Um, I've put out a picture. So my wife is a, is a big bourbon fan, and she we we were drinking a little bit of fan. Wild Turkey One Hundred One. So so Wild Turkey One Hundred One is kind of the go to. You drink it with Coke or whatever. Drink it on ice. It it can handle a lot. Out of the bottle. The beauty of <laughs> of this is that it's a you know six to eight year old. Kentucky straight bourbon with a high rye content. So it's got a little more kick to it than most bourbons are used to. It's number one, it's 101 proof and it's got that rye. So it has a little spice to it that gives it a, a better body to hold within like a Coke or um, soft drink or whatever you want to mix it with. And so I brought a bottle today. And now, do you normally drink this with something? You don't drink it neat? No, I don't, generally don't need to drink it neat. It's, okay. It's just not something you typically do. And the beauty. <laughs> so, I'm on deal. so the the other beauty of this is it's $40 for 175 of this. For a handle. For a handle. You better rinse that glass out and affect your palate. So, I'm doing. <laughs> so I want to get this thing clean. So we had a lot of comments about how good. The, now, listen, I don't know crap about bourbons. I really don't. And But we had a lot of people say this is a really good bourbon. It is. And that, that's the thing I like. The thing I like about this is it has that rye. And as a person that's like peated whiskey, I like a little more flavor and a little more punch in my whiskey. And so this has that because it's a high ABV. And it's now you can get this in a, a Wild Turkey 80 as well. Oh, well why, why would you, would you want do that? <laughs> <laughs> you like it no, it actually isn't bad. I mean, you got a paper towel back there. I'm still drinking Sigmund, so I'm, I'm going to catch up with you guys in a minute. I got a paper towel. Somebody Jeez. pour me a. Poured me a big dram, so. <laughs> is that, that, that Signet or is that the Buna? Signet. <laughs> I drank the Buna. It was good, too. But the Signet is surprisingly tasty. It is. Surprisingly amazing. tasty. Well, I mean, so, so you drink this Buna, and you're like, I mean, that's got a, a nice kick to it, you know? And I'm like, ah, Signet, we'll see how it holds up. Now, it's whew, it's good. Good glass. So Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> it is, that's it, different. I can taste, I can smell a little bit of sugar. I can still smell sweetness on it. That's all I get. So what I'm hearing is you're a bourbon guy now. <laughs> so that, that, this is interesting. So I'm, I am not a bourbon connoisseur. So me talking us through this may not be the best person. I'm sure this. it is. Give it, give it but your best if, shot. If we're gonna, if we're gonna have some bourbon for dummies episodes, this may be one we could kind of start with because it's got a high proof. It's got, it's not just your standard corn and corn mash bill. Twenty-five no, bucks for a yeah, handle of one hundred and one. <laughs> no, for a handle. What do you mean? At high glass. times. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna have a little. What sip. else do they sell at high yeah. times? So the beauty is on the nose Water of this. Pipes. The, Don't call it a bong. I'm getting, I'm getting all that <laughs> rice spice on the nose, which is what I really like about this over a, a typical bourbon. That it's not just a sweet corn mash kind of thing. The rye kicks in. It so has it, a spiciness to it. It's a little bit sour. I, sour is not the right word, but it's a little bit. Um, it's it, mashy. It's a spiciness. It's mashy to me. Like I, I, I but it's a rye, it's a rye mash, not a corn mash. Or it's I, actually the the rye may almost 
make that um, that core mash smell more like pure barley. It doesn't have well, that well, bourbon punch of, of the smell no. that I, nor I normally give. No, I don't get stuff, much out of it. <laughs> You're not tasting anything. The, no, to no, me, no. the the rye adds a nice grassy note to it. It, it tames down the sweetness a little bit. Mm. Interesting. Thanks, Ann. That's nice. Yeah, thanks, Ann. Cool. Nice. Should we talk about 19 bucks at Walmart? A steal. Well, for for a, a for, that's a 750. 750, yeah, yeah, that's not not far off. This is like taking a boy, Dr. Bourbon was here to tell us about bourbon. <laughs> uh, let me let me get through this, guys. Let me get through this. All this, right. this is this is like taking a spoonful of brown sugar mm -hmm. with a little bit of um syrup and what is that? What how do you describe rye? What is that? That that's the tough part. It's rye. It's got so this has a licorice black a... licorice grass fennel. Note to yeah. It. Fennel. Yeah. Oh, um, I hate fennel. Ugh. Yeah, it's it's like black. It's it it's it's no, a spoonful man, of brown sugar it. with it's some not, syrup. It's not fat. It's not. It's not and in licorice. Fennel. That's kind of what I'm getting. Evan Williams bottled in bond. Yeah, that is a good bottle. So I'm I'm so guys. So we we talked about this a little bit. I think that I'm interested to try some stuff because this this right here is not horrible, but this is bourbon to me. <laughs> we, we, this uh, is, I'm, I'm not used to anything. So would you, would you give us a three this or is a not five? Horrible. But well, I want to. I know there's more bourbons out there that get are gonna amaze me. I, I've had one for sure, so I want to try some. I feel see. like we need. Some instruction on all this. I we do. do right? I got a guy so that's going to hook us up. We, we know a guy. We, yeah. we, we need a, maybe a couple of people. We, we, we got some tutors. Right. Right? Yeah. We'll be we'll okay. Go. Yeah. We know some people. I think we'll be all right. So we're going to get that's educated nice. a little bit on this stuff. But I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot and, and learn and see what happens. So. I got a splash of Coke on this thing? If you can. So the key with, the key with bourbons, and of course, in the U United States, it's <laughs> much less expensive to get bourbons. You can get a lot. Better, oh better rated <laughs> bourbon for a better price. Yeah. I mean, whiskey. That's good. It's a good glass. Yeah, I'm and that's the thing. It's, I mean, it's fairly smooth for all, for one on one proof. It doesn't drink like one on one. No, I mean, it doesn't it, drink like fifty percent. And it's, huh? It's got an interesting flavor profile, and for the price, how are you gonna beat that? So, guys. We're getting close to come here. Let's talk about oh, more quickly the new format changes coming yep. up. We don't we haven't ironed it all out yet. No, nope. but we are definitely looking at format changes. Does anyone want to begin with kind of some ideas what we're doing and shirts versus scans? Blouses. Blouses. <laughs> Blouses. <laughs> uh, so we are thinking about, and this is well, we are. We're gonna do we're, this. Right? We're, we're doing thinking. it. So no, we're doing this. We are moving our live show to Sunday afternoons. I'm not um, sure exactly what time, but or what Sunday we're starting. But we're. <laughs> it, it's probably gonna be early March. Would would be my guess. Um, and we are going to start off the live show with a live review because our reviews are all live. Um, like Drew no. said earlier, for all the years you guys have been watching us. Every single review is one take. Now, Drew does magic with editing and things, but what we do, right. it's it's all done in one take because we want to get it. We always have wanted to get our initial reaction. We're pouring it yep. out of the bottle. How do we feel about this dram? So we're planning on the first 10 minutes of the live being that review for the week. And then, you know, luckily, because we're going to be on at the time that we're on sometime in the afternoon. We'll be able to pull people from the UK, people from Pond. from the US to come on as guests. We can interview people. It, it makes it a lot easier for us to have people on that we've met, that we know, that know us, to have them come on our show and give you guys some extra stuff. Um, and that's going to convert Thursday to uh, a patron Primarily only. Primarily patron only, yeah. We're going to do... A short show and patrons are going to be involved in kind of the planning and backstage stuff. It's all for Gerben. Uh, it is all for Gerben. Uh, but it's going to be Thursday. Supporters. Patrons are going to get kind of backstage access to what the show is going to be. Yeah. If we're going to have interviews. They get to throw questions out at us and kind of help us plan out what the show is going to be about. And then uh, that lets us get back to Thursday nights being more for, more for us, yeah. us and 
and kind of planning out what we want to do and just kind of making it more of a, <laughs> a, a relaxed kind there of goes thing. Nap so, time. <laughs> so, so that's key. We haven't, we haven't determined a time because I know there are <laughs> other YouTubers that are, that do. Um, and we're going to do our best not to step on toes. I, I obviously we, we know that uh, there are other YouTubers yep. that have times and we're, we're trying to respect that as much as we can. Not all of them. Cause like you said earlier, there's, I, I mean, it's, it's, them now, but it's also going to come down to what makes sense for us. Yes, um, we you can't know, do it. If there, there's four of us and we're trying to get together and there's a, a time slot that fits for us, and that's going to be the time that we go. Um, but you guys can always catch us. If you can't catch us live, obviously you can catch us um, on the re-review. Absolutely. And so that's kind of what we're planning out. Um, we're still kind of hashing out what, what the format's going to look like in practice. Um, and and when we're going to actually go live with this, but yeah, you guys so, will know. What so we're the, tell the you. Thursday before with patrons, we'll be talking about what bottles we're considering for the review. We'll be talking about the agenda for the for the Sunday live. More involvement. We'll be going through all that, and we'll right. get comments, and you know, and and you'll have, we'll have a much better analysis of what we're going through. That way, we can better vet our ideas. Yep. And have a more polished. Um, content we, on Sundays. We do a lot by listening to our patrons. Our Discord channel is just constant. Right. Like today, we yeah. we talked about our whiskey rating stuff in the last couple of days, and Tons our patrons just blew it up. Huge love it. conversation. And so we're, we, you know, honestly, we we put a lot of value in our patrons. They support the channel, and mm -hmm. we want to we try and give back some more to that and get them more involved. And so our Thursdays with them is going to be more of, of hanging out and just relaxing and talking about upcoming shows and some ideas, you know, and we're going to try to be more creative. But I think honestly, the Sunday afternoon thing um, really gives us a lot more options. Right. It really yeah. does. Yeah, I mean, how many would you uh, of you would like to talk to the um, master distiller at Spay, you know, and, and go through that? Exactly. Me, I would. And, and we can't do that at 10 p.m. on a Thursday because right. there it's it's bedtime. Now, Gerben is hardcore. Trooper. He's a trooper, <laughs> but he also doesn't have to, you know, it's, it's a different story. Right. Yeah. So that's coming up. I mean, we haven't, like you said, we're, we're thinking probably March at this point. We yeah. haven't made any decisions as far as timeline. We, You'll still, know. we, we still need to iron out, but we want to start telling you guys and broadcasting it now that it's coming. So yeah. our Thursday shows will be moving to Sundays very soon within the next probably six weeks or less. And if you still Absolutely. want to hang out with us on Thursdays for a little bit and you're not a patron, become one. Yep. Yeah. We're still going to get together on Thursday. Honestly, we're hoping that this change actually frees up a little bit more time where the four of us can actually just hang out and yeah. not have to constantly be working at it. You know, just, to, I mean, that's what started. This was us four getting together and like pitching darts and watching B rated movies and kind of missed that. B rated. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> quality movies. That's what, that's what started us. So. High quality. <laughs> junk history. Yeah. Oh man. Binge watching junk history. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, so, anyway, we're, we're coming up to the end of the show. Um, yep. What else is going on guys? Eeny, meeny, miny, go. I know well, what's coming yeah, up. Daniel can drive his car anytime. So we'll um, go. we've got some Very cake true. to get to. Thanks, buddy. Don't what? we? We do. What's going on with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. Is it that time of year? It is. Is it next Tuesday? Mm, let's let's uh, move our friend for a second. He's still there. Yes, He's not he going is. anywhere. He's going to stay here Look all Look at day. this. All the way from Louisiana. Louisiana king cake. That Tuesday is. Look at that. Yeah. We're going to cut into this as a little what? dessert. What does this uh, card the, say? The card says, Lee and I thought you should have some Louisiana in your life. Enjoy and let the good times roll. Oh, yeah. Leanne and Mark. Oh, thanks, guys. Mark G. Mark, Mark JG. And, we had our. And Leanne. Lisa, it was the last year. Got you on the bike. I think she said it was the last year. It's the first time I've ever had this, and it has a little baby. Yep, yeah. in the cake. That's who yep. has to throw the, the next party. Yep. Gotcha. If you get the piece with the baby, you're throwing the next party. I see. Okay. So I mean, if we can all get it. together, I'll throw the next party. Hell yeah, yeah, whatever it takes. Uh, I think we're all willing to do that. So. Uh, hey, can, we get like a, can we get a, a six-pack of the vaccine and we just knock it out? <clears throat> Be done. All right, Chris. That sounds senior. great. You say hi to Whistle for us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to dig into this with our, our patrons in the post after show, and we will see you guys next Thursday. We're still on the slate yep. for that. We haven't changed nope, yet. Not yet. Just starting to communicate. But it's coming, so just um, be prepared. What else? What, what what review we got coming up? Do we know? We don't, don't know yet, actually. Oh, actually, we have uh, your Glenn. Are, are you, Glenn oh, man. Glenn, Glenn Livett Liv Liv for Dummies. That's oh, exciting. There you go. The new for Dummies video, Glenn Livett. Sean pulled it's, this one. It's a long one. Yeah, it is. That's all right. It's a long 
range, isn't it? I mean, it's a pretty big core range. Yeah. You got a lot to talk about. Yep. So awesome. This is cake here, boys. All, all right, right, man. Let's do this. Cheers to everybody. Thanks Cheers. for all the super Happy chats. Thursday. Happy Slide Thursday, y'all. everybody. And uh, I guess uh, happy Mardi Gras, huh? Right? <laughs> Don't we'll mind if you. I do. <laughs> Thank you.